In this video, we will learn how to add a LCD screen and menu navigation to a project. This is a classic UI that is found on thousands of products. And by the end of the video, you will be a pro because we are starting from scratch. The first thing we need to consider is what we are going to use to control our project. This can be pretty daunting with so many options available to us, like the classic Arduino Uno, the ESP variants like the 32 and 8826, the relative newcomer PyPico and ESP minis. Memory and speed aside, there is one major factor to consider. Keeping in mind any of these could be used for the task today. One of these is not like the other, and that is the Uno. The Uno has 5 volt I.O., but what does that mean? The I.O. are sockets on the side of the board here. For the ESP, they are pins usually, but on the Yono and some other Arduinos, they are sockets, so you can easily add shields. This is where we plug in our sensors and switches. But why does the voltage matter? Here we have an Arduino and an SD card reader. We can connect this card reader to the Arduino to store or read data. It's 5 volt safe. Here is a regular SD card adapter with headers soldered to it. This is absolutely not 5 volt safe, and using it with the Arduino will fry your SD card. You could easily use this with any of the other controllers as they have 3.3 volt I.O. The moral of the story being check if your sensor is 5 volt safe. If you are stuck with either too high or too low a voltage, you can convert the voltage with a device like this called a level shifter. For this project, I am going to use the ESP32C3 Mini mainly because it doesn't take up much real estate on my breadboard and the screen is 3.3 volts. You can see here the full ESP32S has a lot more pins, way more than we need in this case. Along with the controller, we are going to need a breadboard, our screen, the joystick, a NeoPixel, and hookup wires. Let's talk breadboards. This handy tool allows us to add components to a circuit without soldering. If you are starting out, you do not want to just start soldering things together. That's a great way to kill a hobby. Uh, I have had this board a while and has seen a few overcurrent situations. As you can see from the scorch marks, the breadboard has contact paths going across the board. If we have a look at the back, we can see the contacts. On the side, there are rails that go the length. These are for power. Note they stop halfway. Um, that is a great gotcha. First, we will add the controller, making sure this valley goes through the center. This ensures there is no continuity between either side of the board. After we have our controller in place, we can start adding our screen and sensors. We will start with the screen. Connecting components to a microcontroller is not like plugging a USB device into a computer. Nothing is automatically detected. Instead, every device uses a communication protocol to talk to the controller. The three most common protocols are UART, I2C, and SPI. Screens typically use SPI because it is fast and well suited to sending large amounts of data, like pixels. If we look at the back of the display, we see a row of pins. Each pin has a specific purpose. Our job is to connect each of these pins to the correct pin on the controller. This is where things can start to get confusing. SPI uses several signals. You will normally see a chip select pin called CS, a data command pin called DC, a clock pin called SCK, a data pin called MOSI, a reset pin called RST. Some displays also include a backlight pin to control brightness. On a well-labeled display, these pins would be clearly marked as CS, DC, SCK, and MOSI. But on this display, they are not. Instead, we see labels like SDA and SCL. This makes things even more confusing. Those labels actually belong to a completely different protocol called I2C. So what is going on? Many display manufacturers reuse the same pin labels, even when the display is using SPI instead of I2C. In this case, we need to ignore the letter S at the start of those names. SDA becomes data. SCL becomes clock. In SPI terms, this means SDA on the display connects to MOSI on the controller. SCL on the display connects to SCK on the controller. This is where many people get caught out. If we look at the controller pinout, we may also see pins labeled SDA and SCL. Those pins belong to the controller's I2C hardware, not SPI. Even though the names match, they are not the pins we want. So remember this rule. Display SDA goes to controller MOSI. 
Display SCL goes to controller SCK. Once you understand that, wiring SPI displays becomes much easier. Now we are all wired up, we can test. It looks daunting, but all the code and diagrams are free on my Patreon. I have hooked the backlight to ground for full brightness. The screen is powered via the ESP 3.3 volts. All things being equal, it should just be a case of adding USB power. Let's talk about powering our project. At the moment, it's on the bench and we can use USB. But what if you wanted to use batteries? We need 5 or 3.3 volts, right? Batteries don't come in such convenient sizes. Your typical battery is 1.2 to 1.5 volts. LiPo batteries go from 3 to 4.2 volts. Not to mention all the other sizes. If we use a dev board like we are, they come with regulators. These special components can convert voltages down to the 3.3 volts all controllers use. If we have a look at the board pins, we can see 5 volts sometimes. This says VIN. You might think this pin can only accept 5 volts, but it will handle from 4 up to 12 volts in some cases. Just keep in mind, regulators dissipate heat. The higher the input voltage, the hotter your board will get, and it might even get damaged. Looks like our screen is up and running. Now to add our switches, but what is a switch actually doing? It is as you would expect two contacts touching each other completing a circuit. One wire goes to one of the controller I.O. pins. But where does the other go? Usually it would go to ground or GND. The controller picks up on this sudden drop in voltage and says this is low or on as far as we are concerned. Confusing, right? This joystick has five switches for front, back, left and right as well as select. The downside being it takes up five I.O. pins for a relatively simple task. Our screen and joystick are working, which leaves us with our output, which is this addressable RGB light. What is an addressable light? Traditionally, you would have lights all strung together with one switch. Turn on the switch, all the lights come on at once. But what if we added a host controller with one more wire, then a cheap controller in every light that gave each light its own address? We can now turn each light on and off, or alter the color and brightness as well. That is exactly what is happening in addressable LEDs. They come in all shapes and sizes and provide really cool effects. If you have made it this far, you should totally subscribe. Here is our project done. I am using the LED to demonstrate output. You might use a motor or servo maybe, but don't connect those directly to your controller. I will cover that in another video. For now, we can scroll through the menu and control the LED based on our selection. Let me know in the comments if something wasn't clear or you would like something covered in more detail. Thanks for watching.